Então, o compêndio da Alexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração, você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é Alexio Divina? Alexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hello everyone, I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the Word Community and I'm happy to be back with you all on this Tuesday, July 20th, to do Lexia Divina and to meditate with Sacred Scripture. After this beautiful family festival, so we are here now together for our daily meditation on, word of, on the Word of God. So today we will read Exodus chapter 14 verse 21 until chapter no, sorry, so it's chapter 14, verse 21, then we go to chapter 15, verse 1, then verses 20 to 21. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 15, and the gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 12, verses 46 to, with verse 46, then we go to verses 48 to 50. Let's share the, word, the reading of the word of God for this Tuesday. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Israelites were encamped at the edge of the sea. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his army pursued them, so as to enslave them once again. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into, into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, and waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went, and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's house, horses, chariots, and chariots drivers. All at the morning, at the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of the fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficult difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots and the chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, And at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariots' drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained, but the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. 
Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we saw the journey that Mo Moses did. So Moses' journey to set God's people free. And in this chapter today, we face this, the end of this journey, being set free from the land of Egypt. Remember back then in the book of Genesis, when Joseph prophesied that he was that God was going to set his people free. Remember what Jacob said before dying, what God said to Jacob before he dies, saying that I am going down with you to Egypt and I will bring you up. So this is what we saw during this past week in the readings of Exodus. Moses, God raised up Moses to to deliver God's people. So when he delivered his people, he was fulfilling God's will. So Moses here is this sent, was sent by God to deliver his people. And God made this miracle of the Red Sea, making these huge walls, one in the right and one in the left, for people to walk in dry land. But then with the people, with the Egyptians, what did he do? He toss them into the sea. So we see that God remains faithful. God's promises to all of us, to our families, He remains faithful. God is faithful. And at the end, it says that Miriam, Mo Moses' sister, he started singing what we will see that is for the responsorial psalm today is the canticle from Exodus chapter 15 that says, in the greatness of your majesty, you overthrew your adversaries. At the blast of your nostrils, the water peeled up. O oh Lord, the flood stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of, of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty water. You stretched out your hand, the earth swallowed them. You brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your own possession, the place, O Lord, that you made your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. So this canigo today came from Miriam's mouth, praising God for what he did. He says, our enemies thought that they were going to take us, to, to, to win us. But God showed his grace. God showed his weight and his majesty. God was there with them. So beautiful story of deliverance that we see here. We see God's promise. There is walking with his people. Genesis with Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and then so on. That we will see uh, Joshua, the prophets. God's promise remained to Jesus, Jesus and the apostles and the saints and to each one of us. God's promise is everlasting. The gospel today from St. Matthew chapter 12, verse, verse 46, then we go to verse 48 to 50 says, while Jesus was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. But to the one who said, but the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, Who is my brother and who who is my mother and who are my brothers? 
and pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Gospel many times is misunderstood, saying, Oh, Jesus was disrespectful with Mary. So Jesus did not recognize Mary as his mother. No. Jesus was here praising his mother. Why? Because he said, pointing to the disciples, saying, Here are my mother and brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother, sister, and mother. Whoever does the will of my Father is my brother, sisters, and mother. Mary. Who was Mary? Who more than Mary did God's will? Mary, the perfect human being, she did God's will. Mary was just like us and she was able to be open to God's plan and to do God's will. So she is the mother of Jesus. But we are called to be his brothers and sisters when we do God's will. That's why you call a, a, a nun a sister. You call a, a monk a brother. Because we, not only us, but we try to do God's will. And that's why we are called brothers and sisters. But you, you that are married there in your family, you that maybe are single still, you are also called to be brothers and sisters of Christ doing God's will. We, our vocation to be called sister or brother is to remind you that you are also a brother and sister in Christ. When you call a sister, you call a brother, you are being reminded what you are called to do. So Jesus wasn't disrespectful with his mother at all. He was pointing her, saying, look at her. She was able to say yes to the Lord, so we all need to say yes to the Lord. Be just like my mother. Be like my mother. So be like Mary. All of us, we are called to be like our mother in heaven, to follow Christ and to obey God's will. And today, July 20th, the church celebrates Saint Apollinaris. Apollinaris lived in the first century and according to, to legend, was chosen the first bishop of Ravenna by St. Peter. He was also one of the first great martyrs. During the reigns of Emperor Claudius and Vespasian, he was repeatedly exiled and tortured, by continue, but continued to evangelize and work miracles until his martyrdom. So today we celebrate this ancient saint. He was chosen by St. Peter. He was chosen by St. Peter. St. Peter continued Jesus' mission, choosing apostles, choosing disciples. And it gets to us today. So Jesus' word, Jesus' mission continues among us. So let us keep this promise and keep this call to be Jesus' brothers and sisters, helping each other and building up our church. Amen.